We were walking around the creek the other day and we found this, a solar panel. And uh, the front pieces, you know, I just accidentally took them off and they just cracked right off. I'm just curious, how does a heavily weathered solar panel handle being just destroyed in the creek? Let's see, first off, can we get any voltage difference? Oh, we got 0 0.5, 0 0.41 volts. So, 0.536 volts. Okay, and, oh yeah, so it says my, it says plus there. So that still works. But how much current can we get? Point one milliamp. That's quite low. But it still is generating an actual circuit, which is kind of amazing. That one's not. We have SP plus and SP minus. It's amazing that this side is still producing power, but this side isn't. So it looks like this is four cells. Um, oh wait, no, they're all in series. Okay. So... This is how solar panels fail, because if there's this, an issue in these links, it fails. And of course, there's plenty of issues in these links. I'm just surprised that, for instance, got one whole volt from that. So these two cells are still running. They're still producing. Look at the digital multimeter. They're still they're producing one whole volt of power. Oh, and you just moved your uh, camera over the solar panel. And it's in the shade. Uh huh. And now it's back up. Can I do the other one? 1.5 volts. Okay, so this was one, two, three and a half. So this is like a 13 volt solar cell. Let's see. Nope, so that one's, oh, we got a whole two volts there. So you, yeah. 2.06 volts across that. But here's the question. What kind of amperage? Because this one would be the weakest link and this chip right here would cause the, uh, would be the bottleneck. So if you were in like a doomsday scenario, you would want to remove that and go with the biggest ones, which this is slim pickings here, but still. Yeah, point, oh, point 0.1. Point 0.02 for these. So this one's limiting it to 0.01, and this is, and these other ones are 0.02. Still a very, very small amount of power. What a weird thing how these, you know, it's interesting because I was thinking about this earlier, how an engine has a certain number of parts and each part has to work, otherwise if it breaks, the whole thing breaks. Whereas something like a solar panel, um, you could cut in half and the half of it still works. Like with an engine, if the pistons fail, the carburetor isn't gonna work as the pistons, you know? But if a solar panel fails, if you take out the, the missing link, the rest of it still functions. It's just, it's probably heating up that bad one by putting the power through it. So it's like, it's just, it's an array of multiple things. It's interesting how, like, look at the gashes on that. You can tell this, this entire panel is curved because it was like grinded against the rocks and the storms and stuff. This has been outside for a very long time. There's sand and junk underneath here. Ooh, 
Let's see what we get here. Point oh one. Or, 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 point, yeah, point oh one. And then the voltage. Did these still work? Two point one three. One point five nine. Two point nine one. But again, there's no real meat to this. It's it is voltage, but it's well I mean I did have to destroy it to get to it. But in a doomsday scenario, or if you found a good panel that you wanted to try to use, like if one of my viewers found a good panel that wasn't this destroyed where it was delaminating, they could send it send it to me and I'd probably have a few projects where I'd if this was together as a whole, it could probably power an Arduino, for instance. But um with this, if you find one of these and you really need a solar panel, you'd, you'd want to get a drill and drill into the, the board and to catch the contacts. And then you could test which cells are bad and jump the ones that are bad. So for instance, in a cell, in an array like this, if you found there was a crack and say a few of these were bad, you could you could cut in, cut that plastic away, and then jump past these these cells because for instance, right here, you could imagine these like the, the functionality still. The bigger ones that, are, that still have most of the surface left have a lot more capacity. And these smaller ones, such as this one, have almost no capacity. And so, whenever the power snakes its way through the, this grid on the underside of this, it would have to uh, go through the weakest link. And so, the power of this one would be limited to whatever the weakest link was. And so if you have one broken cell, you can jump between that, just making that one useless. The entire thing goes down half of a volt, but you then have it no longer limited by the weakest link. You could have it, for instance, just these ones together, which were like twice the size as that. And you, could, you could still make a solar panel function. The thing that I find most interesting is the fact that you can rip these apart and it's still producing voltage. That's the weird thing because with most of these cells, the other half is on here. So, um, it's just interesting how it's made. Yeah, it's just interesting how it's made. Now, I'm not going to be using this for a solar panel because it's dead, but this is some high, high quality thickness, like, like um, phenolic resin or whatever. It's a circuit board. And I just ordered some Nixie tubes and I need a circuit board to put them on to handle the high voltage, 170 volts DC, and this board will be perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape that off. I'm gonna recycle it or whatever you do with solar panels. And I'm going to reuse this board without the contacts on it, just for the, uh, the board itself. And I'll have my Nixie tubes on there. So that'd be a good reuse of something I found in the trash. Free circuit board, nice thick one too. Oh, pretty good. I, man I managed to find 2.4 volts across here. Some of these other traces are dying. Ah, oh, geez, I have like no tools out here. Can't do anything, but it is giving about one mil uh, or yeah, one mil milliamp of power. Very small amount, and uh, it is slowly upping the voltage a tiny bit, but boy is it going to be slow. This is only a ghost of a shadow of a trickle charge. Oh, just the ghost of the shadow, eh? You'd have to be pretty desperate to need this. So instead I'm going to take apart this circuit board and use the back plane for my Nixie tube insulation. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya. You think that's probably good? Yeah. Okay.